Hi, this video is just going to take you through paper one, question five. Um, and to start off with, I'm going to draw attention to how important the writing tasks are. Now, you have two exam papers that make up the whole of GCSE English language, and you are looking roughly to get 50% to get a grade four. Now, on the writing tasks themselves, they are worth 25% each in terms of the overall GCSE papers itself. So you can see how important it is that we get this writing good and sorted out. So paper one is a piece of creative writing. And like paper two, you are assessed on two things. And today I'm gonna to go through those two things. You're assessed on your content and organization of your writing. And also you're assessed on what you probably know as SPAG, spelling, punctuation, and grammar but the exam board call it uh, something different. And you can see that you get more marks for your content and organization than you do for your SPAG. Now, a little bit of advice on the paper when you do the final exam itself. We suggest that you start with question five first because you'll be fresh for writing. Um, if you think about it after an hour of writing for question one, two, and three, and four, you'll be a little bit tired and you'll be likely to make some punctuation mistakes and some spelling mistakes. So we tend to say, start with question five and then go through the other questions that way when it gets to the final exam. Now, this is just an overview of the exam marks itself and to give you an idea of how many marks, and you can see these are the average marks. And so the average mark for question five uh, for content and organization is usually about 12 marks. And the average mark for question five for technical accuracy, SPAG, is usually eight marks, which shows you that's how many marks we're looking to get if we want to get a grade four for this particular paper itself. And because the average will be grade four, and so that's what we're looking to beat. We want to be above the average so that we've got a grade four or above. And so you're looking roughly to get about 40 marks out of 80 for the paper itself. Now that just gives you an overview of the marks itself. Now question five, we've got another video for you to go through to learn how to write properly for question five. What we're gonna do is just go through the marking today. So you understand what the examiner is looking for and what are the most important things to think about. Now the paper itself, it doesn't matter for the examiner which choice you go for, um, you'll either be given a picture or a story idea. The generally in the task itself, one will be a descriptive piece of writing, the other will be a story. We tend to say that the descriptive pieces are usually easier to write because it allows you to be more controlled with your writing. Uh, the story writing can be a little bit tricky and it can kind of trick people. But we're going to show you how you can avoid that, hopefully, with the next few slides. So I'm going to look at that spelling, punctuation and grammar um, element. So out of 16 marks, we have this which is the technical accuracy. Now, exam markers don't tell you specifically what they're gonna look at. They've got, they're gonna look at all these things. But what I will tell you very, very clearly is in the mark scheme, some things are more important than other things. So when you look at the top thing, the top thing is the most important thing in the skilled descriptors for English. The least important thing are the bottom two things. Now this is gonna kind of change your view on things because spelling and vocabulary are not as important as sentence structure. That's how the exam board view it. Now, spelling and vocabulary are the easy things to spot, aren't they? Because they're the first things that parents and teachers pick up and say, your spelling isn't very good or you need to improve your vocabulary. This is showing you that the exam board, they're not looking at those first. So your spelling and your vocabulary are kind of at the bottom of the things that they're looking for. So at the top band, what are we looking for? So sentence structure. Now sentence demarcation, what that means is that you are punctuating correctly with full stops and commas where they need to be. 
That's what sentence demarcation means. It means that you're writing in clear sentences. And if we have a look as we go down further down the grades, we have a look that your sentence demarcation becomes less accurate. So you're not using full stops correctly. And if we see that actually your grade three and your grade four, most of your sentences are accurate, but not all of them. And then when we get down to grade two and one, you, you're occasionally getting sentences right. And so your use of sentences is key. And so the first thing the examiner will look at in your writing will be sentence structure when they're looking at technical accuracy. So they'll be looking at those things. Then the next thing they'll be looking at is punctuation. Now I want to be really, really clear about punctuation. Commas and full stops are the most important pieces of punctuation. What's happened over time is that people have got into the habit of adding colons and semicolons with the idea that these are somehow really fancy pieces of punctuation and what they do is they can show off that you're a high level skill. The problem is, is that comma usage is the most important thing. Um, students have been known to add colons and semicolons to make their writing better. And actually, if you haven't used a comma correctly, then these are kind of wasted. And so examiners are not going to be looking to see that you've got a colon or a semicolon. They're going to be looking to see that you've got really good crystal clear use of comma usage rather than you've got a semicolon. So my advice is make sure you get your commas right and spend time reading through the work, making sure that commas are used correctly. And if you're not sure, we will be doing some stuff in lessons. And obviously you can obviously use the internet to find out and to learn. One thing that we do say is sentence structure. If you can learn sentence structures and where a comma goes in a sentence, that kind of helps you when you're writing. And then the next thing that we're looking for, if we go through the bullet points, is a range of sentences. So we're looking for variety in sentences. So these are the things that we're looking for in your writing. And it may not be the things that you were thinking we were looking for. So really, we want this to be your priority in your writing. And then we get grammar. So we're going to be checking your writing grammar. Then it's spelling and then vocabulary. And what we've got between the grades is how accurate you are with those. So, for example, if we're looking at the bottom, your spelling is usually basic, gets a bit more complex, a bit more accurate as we go along, really accurate. And so that's how the grading works. So when you're writing question five, make sure that you are using sentences correctly and check full stops and commas are used correctly. And that means checking over and checking. Make sure your commas are used accurately and correctly and put the focus on commas when you're reading through your work. Number three, make sure that you use a variety of sentences in your writing. So that's one of the things we're going to be looking. If these are accurate and we see lots of it, then it means that you're going to get higher in terms of the grade boundaries. So that just makes things a little bit clearer. And hopefully you see how important your sentence structure is and commas for getting the writing right. And obsessing about spelling and vocabulary isn't going to suddenly fix things because the first thing the examiner is going to look for is your sentence use. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is content and organisation. Now, this is a kind of a, a funny one to talk about. So this is kind of like your writing and the ideas that you've got in it, but how you structure it. And so it works on um, very, very basic. I'm gonna work from the bottom up so you can understand what it is we're looking for. So at the bottom, okay, there'll be nothing meaningful written. So usually what will be written for a level zero will be uh, random words. And so there'll be nothing that we can kind of make sense of. And so very rarely will anybody be here. So very, very few students will be here. OK, at the bottom, 
And you know, the words clear, clear here are very simple and limited. So what will happen is, and you can see that they spread it into two simple things. So you've got content and organization. Now at this stage, you can see no paragraphs. Now paragraphing is a key factor and we need to see paragraphing. That will get you out of level one straight away that you're not writing in paragraphs. So what happens here is in the description for level one. So you're talking about grade ones and grade twos really. What they're doing is they've got a really basic story or a basic description. So, you know, the people were sad on the bus. They weren't happy. They were very, very sad. Simple words and probably no real techniques are used. And then what they've got is really, really basic writing. And so you'll tend to see this kind of thing. They'll go, um, one day a man woke up, uh, he got on a bus, um, he was very, very sad. So you've got kind of very, very simple writing. Okay, and very few people are working about here. Then we move up. Now remember 12 marks is where we're looking at the grade four. So the grade four is really about halfway here. And again, it's about communication. Now you can see clear and some. So this is the best way to describe it is this is a bit of writing that's got some good bits in it. That's what makes this it makes this piece here level two. That's what we're looking for. And what gets it above here? So we're looking at grade, you know, five and six. OK, what are they doing? Most of it is good. That's what we're looking. So little bits of glimpses of good stuff. But here we've got that it's a bit more consistent if we have a look further down. So. So there's some success. OK, they're writing. They're trying to write in a, in a sort of style um, and they're using words for effect. So this person might have some good words. For effect. So they're kind of trying to make the reader feel something and they might have a few techniques. That's what's here really getting towards that grade four. So some good bits of writing uh, and some good words and the occasional good technique. What do they do with their paragraphing structure? Well, what they tend to do is they write in paragraphs. That's the key thing. So they write in paragraphs and what they're starting to do is they're starting to vary their paragraphs. So they might be talking about different things. So they might talk about uh, light in one paragraph and then another, they're gonna talk about the smells. Uh, and then another, they're gonna talk about an object. So what they're doing is they're talking about different things rather than just the same thing all the time. So what is it about this one? What do they get better? Well, what they get better here is clearly they've got more in it. So the style, it's more stylish okay and it's all the way through so it's quite consistent okay um they use more interesting phrases so the word order that they've got and instead of using a kind of cliche that it was an eerie atmosphere they would kind of sort of they would say it's kind of a nostalgic atmosphere they'd use more sophisticated words and phrases so they won't just use the most obvious so really what's happening here is students are using less cliched written so there's something about it it's above average that's what they're doing. They're not writing what a typical uh, year 11 would write. They're writing something more interesting. And so they're kind of a bit more thoughtful writing. And you can start seeing here that the writing is getting engaging and there's connected ideas and that the paragraphs are stronger. So the paragraphs are structured. So what you might do is you might have like a theme across the different paragraphs or a phrase that's repeated again and again or a motif. 
so which is an image that's repeated again and again so there's a sense of some kind of structure that's going on so that's what gets a grade five and a grade six in terms of the writing so majority of it's good it's stylish it's not cliched it's not what your average year 11 is writing um, it's it there's a level of structure and detail behind it okay so what is it that gets the top grade so what is it about grade nine and grade eight well you see the thing is that a lot of the words that are used here convincing and compelling well what that basically means is is that the examiner forgets that they're actually reading an, an assessed piece that's how so the examiner is engaged and actually the examiner wants to carry on reading with it because they're so enjoying it so much that's quite a hard thing to kind of describe but you know that with a piece of writing or a story that it's so well written that you don't want it to stop that's what it's looking for and as we go further on extensive ambitious so again it's that kind of more stylish sustained crafting what that means is that there's a big plan that actually every little bit it's almost like the writing is like a jigsaw for the reader and everything works together it fits together it kind of and this is a, an interesting word that we use it kind of flows it's almost like um, you know when you read a piece of writing um, when it's a bit clunky and you're like oh I wasn't expecting that or that sounds dodgy and you know it gets to the point where you don't realize that you're reading you're so absorbed in it now you might think well, actually what about mistakes can I make mistakes in a grade 9 grade 8 yes you can all right they're not looking for perfect okay not perfect and I think that needs to be really really clear they know that as students you've got 45 minutes to write something really really interesting and actually what they don't expect is perfection they just want something that is sophisticated something that kind of is mature an adult something that kind of really shows how clever and intelligent you are they're not looking for mature as in oh I've got a few swear words in my writing aren't I an adult they're looking for something a bit more clever something more sophisticated in that kind of way what they want structure wise is they want something inventive so it could be you know that you start um, you know you kind of fool the reader into something or you start positive and end negative or you're being a little bit playful and one of the signs that I would say is that a top mark would be a little bit playful with the structure they do things that we wouldn't expect them to do and they're kind of playing around with things and so they're talking here we've got complex ideas and this idea of having things are so linked together so that should give you an idea of what it is at the top so we're looking for engaged the examiner to be engaged they forget that they're reading a piece of assessment we need it to be more stylish uh, a sense of a bigger plan um, you know there could be some flaws in there but we want it to flow and this idea of being a sophisticated mature piece of writing that shows how clever you are that's what we're looking at the top end and if you think about it it is the best of the best it's better than everybody else that's what the top band are looking to do something that's going to kind of just take the the examiner's mind away and go oh my goodness i cannot believe a 16 year old sat in an exam in 45 minutes produced that kind of writing now a little bit of a tip you could pre-plan something before you even go into that exam and then change it before you get there so you could have a plan already so you know you can help yourself with this right quick little tips then so what do you need to do to make sure that you get better in this question well one sentence structure sentence structure is so important we cannot spell out 
how important it is. Make sure that you use a variety of sentences and, you know, have a look at your writing and make sure that it doesn't start with the this. Look at avoiding having all your sentences start with this. This is a typical kind of grade three kind of writing where they just go it, the, this, whatever you're talking about. Get commas and full stops correct. They are the most important piece of punctuation. It doesn't matter if you can use a semicolon. If you're not using commas correctly, then you're not using punctuation correctly. And the examiner's not going to be fooled. So make sure and check at the end, check that you've used commas and full stops correctly, because that's going to be the first thing the examiner is going to be looking for with your writing for technical accuracy. Description is easier to show control because you're writing about less things. So that's always a bit of advice. If you are those one of those students that struggle to use full stops and commas correctly, then we say it's better to focus on the description because you're not going to get carried away with the story. Often what happens with students with the story is they get carried away and they're more bothered about the story than the writing. The description is easy to focus on the writing. Plan, plan, plan. Go in before you write and have a structure. That's what they're looking for. You only need to write three or so paragraphs, but what we want you to do is have a plan. You cannot ramble and create a good structure. You need that structure. You need a good design behind your writing so that you're building up. And at the end of the day, you want to build up to something, whether it's going from positive to negative or you're creating an atmosphere and then you're going to have a twist. OK, what you need to do is you need to have those clues that are there to build up to. Make sure your reader feels something. OK, so avoid trying to make things scary because that ends you down cliches. Try and make people feel sad or kind of happy or kind of a strange feeling. That's much better than going, "Ooh, it's a scary haunted house. OK, if you go that way, you end up doing cliches. Um, do something interesting with your writing. What you want is you want your writing to stand out from the crowd. If you write a cliche writing, I'm going to write about a haunted house. Lots of students will write about haunted houses. You want to be standing above the crowd. So you need to look at what to do. And remember, spelling and vocabulary are important, but don't obsess about it. Make sure that your punctuation and your sentence structure is sorted out first before you work on those things. OK, do check out the YouTube channel for other videos. There's loads on there and we'll keep adding as we go along. Thank you.